Hi, I'm Kevin Paul, Psychic and Medium, and I recently conducted an interview with a special guest and we talked all about spiritualism, your spiritual journey, and the paranormal or the psychic sciences, and how they all fit together, and then we kind of went off on a couple other tangents. So enjoy our chat and learn lots of good stuff. I'd like to welcome my special guest, Jackie Wright, all the way from England. Jackie is a medium, speaker, healer, teacher, and the course organizer and chairman at the world-renowned Arthur Finley College in Stansted, Essex, which is in England. She was my tutor when I attended a mediumship course at the Arthur Finley College in September 2019. I have to say that Jackie's course really provided me some major breakthrough experiences. It was just amazing, and I sincerely want to thank her for that opportunity. My pleasure, Kevin, thank you. Today I've invited Jackie to talk about a topic that I think many people who are, are very interested in and are confused about all at the same time. It's, I title it Spiritualism and the Paranormal or Psychic Sciences. And my question is, how do they all fit together? Easy topic, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> It's a topic we might need more than one evening for. <laughs> Let's start with the question, what is spiritualism? Spiritualism is a religion. It has been a legally recognized religion in England for a long time now. It is, um, we have over 300 churches in England, and spiritualism is a, is a religion that we practice, like some practice Catholicism or whatever else. Mm -hmm. And the premise of that religion is mediumship or spirit return. But you can be a spiritualist without being a medium, just like you can be a Catholic without being a priest, if you will. So yeah, spiritualism is a religion. It was birthed because of phenomena, because of mediumship, but doesn't necessarily mean that because you are one, you are the other. And you guys have many churches and communities, spiritual communities in England, I think is, is much more active than in, in America. Yeah, we have over 300, I think it's about 365 churches in England. And it's, you know, I say this constantly, I am a minister of spiritualism. And spiritualism, the religion, is vitally important to me. It is my chosen religion. My what we do, I say this constantly, is that we are born into a religion. We adopt the religion usually of our parents and grandparents. Spiritualism is the religion I have chosen, a religion I have looked at, I have studied, and I have decided it fits my needs. And you're a minister. I am a minister and I'm very proud to be a minister. Yeah, and I'm a minister of spiritualism and I'm a prison chaplain. Um, and a vice president of the Spiritualist National Union. So yeah, I wear many hats. Wonderful. I'm very, I'm very proud of you, and I couldn't think of a better person to be, to be leading the, the movement there in England, mm -hmm. for sure. I have a question about the spiritual journey. People talk about, you know, they're not religious, I'm spiritual, and I'm on my own spiritual journey, or I would like to take a spiritual journey. What does that mean? And, you know, I think, Kevin, it means different things to different people. Religion gets a bad press. It's very much seen as something that dictates to us and tells us how we should live, how we should, um, yeah, be as people. So what we do, and I said earlier, we adopt a religion, we are born into a religion, and then we rebel against it. Mm -hmm. We start to say, why should we do this? And why should we believe in a God on a cloud? And all of that. And so we start to look for something that suits our needs. And ultimately, I believe that that journey where we are searching outside of ourselves, we're looking at Buddhism, we're looking at spiritualism, we're looking at Catholicism, ultimately, the journey should take us into our own soul. And it should start by, it should end with us looking at the God within each and every one of us. If I can find God within me, I can find God within you. And then that way we start to bond as a 
community and as a brotherhood instead of fighting each other's differences. Mm. And what's the difference between a spirit and a soul? Yeah, it's a big question. And I've said it's a question that a lot of people will differ when you ask them. So just to say right up front, I'm sharing you my understanding of where I am on my journey right now. And for me, our spirit, and the spirit and soul coexist within the physical self, okay? At the point of physical death, they are released. The spirit is what goes to the spirit world for identification. So when Kevin's body's passed away, his family and friends go, where's Kevin now? The medium will link to your spirit, which is the exact replica of you. Your lights, your experiences, etc. Your soul, on the other hand, will at some point separate from the spirit and journey to, we, we, we're going to use language here, and language will never be correct, but the Godhead, the divine, the universal consciousness, whatever word you want to use. Um, some people will say it's the opposite, but I argue the question, and why have we said spirit communication, spirit world, spirit messages, if it's the soul, not the spirit? So that's my belief right now where I am. Mm, so this it's, really terminology, vocabulary. It is. Definitely it is. two separate things we're talking about. But they are, and people don't often realize that they are two separate entities, if you will, for want of a better word. Your spirit and your soul are separate, but within your physical self, they are together. Mm. Yeah. But they have separate functions, if you will. Mm. Good, good thoughts there. My next question is, how do psychic and mediumship abilities fit into and help us on our spiritual journey? You know, the word psychic gets a lot of bad press. People, oh, psychic, and oh, it's inferior to mediumship and all of this. Psychic is what I call the foundation, the foundation to which everything grows upon, okay? So we are psychic when we are understanding our own spirit and our own um, energy and each other's spirit and energy. So the psychic aspect is about working with each other. You know, how is Kevin as a man? What are his likes, his dislikes? Mediumship is about contacting the other world. So we use the psychic aspect to help people here and now when we need help with life, if you will, and the mediumistic aspect when we need to have connections with the unseen world that's the difference yeah. honestly they are different but they are both vital one is not superior to the other they are both vital i i once remember a, a wonderful friend and medium called paul jacobs and he said who is more important a lady whose husband has died or a lady whose husband has left her who is more in need mm. And the answer is both are grieving, but the lady whose husband has died needs mediumship. The lady whose husband has left her needs the psychic. They're both vital. Mm. And these skills or abilities, how do they help us along our journey, just individually? Oh, you see, and again, this is only my thoughts. I believe that the mediumistic aspect, if you will, is a hook by the spirit world. So we begin with, oh, where's mom gone? Where's dad gone? Let's go to a medium. Then I want to try mediumship. Can I develop it? But ultimately, if we are connecting correctly, that journey into mediumship, into psychicism, should take us on a journey into our own soul. And I believe that's the spirit world's greatest need, greatest want. I mean, look, let's face it. We're going to die one day. We're all going to leave this world. So what's the point of the spirit world coming back and saying, hey, mom's still alive, dad's still alive? Because we're going to meet them one day. Mm -hmm. So why do they bother? Well, 
I think it's because the spirit world is saying, yes, look, there's the evidence your loved ones are alive and well. So the evidence is you will be alive and well forever. So what are you going to do about life now? How are you going to live it? How are you going to become a better person within this world that you born? And I think that's what they ultimately want. Mm. Now, the importance, what is the importance of training one psychic and mediumship abilities? Crucial. Crucial. <laughs> you see, there's an old adage, isn't it, that we can all play a piano and make a noise. But if we want to become concert pianists, we've got to train. So in other words, we all have an ability. We all have a, a sixth sense. We all have a knowing. But if we want to become good at what we do or competent at what we do, then we need understanding. We need training. We need to know how our abilities function within us individually because we're all unique. Your mediumship will never be mine. Mine will never be somebody else's because we're unique. So therefore there is a need to understand our own mediumship in that unique individual way. But then to train it, to hone it, to make it the best it can be with understanding, with practice, with knowledge. Knowledge is the key to everything, I think. And training, especially with these abilities. Yeah. And, and you, you, you get the training that gives you the knowledge. The knowledge then gives you the understanding. The understanding helps you to perfect your, your craft, if you will, or your discipline. Whether it's healing, whether it's mediumship, whether it's tarot card reading, whatever it is, the training helps you to perfect it, to understand it, to then be responsible with it because it's about giving and healing other people as well as yourself, correct? Everything, everything is ultimately about healing. You know, some people say, I'm only a healer, or I'm only a communication medium, or I am only. Everything, everything is ultimately about healing. Whether you're saying to somebody, I've got your loved one here, and this is the evidence of them, that promotes a healing. It helps us to heal that grief that we are carrying. If we lay our hands on somebody, that's a healing. Everything is healing, or should be. So part of a spiritual journey may be individual, but as I have learned that I have abilities and skills that help me somewhat but more it helps other people by me being part of you know being a psychic and a medium uh, it allows me to to help others while i'm helping myself along this journey and you know, sorry kevin i'm interrupting you oh go ahead i just wanted to say and it's something i'm passionate about you cannot be separate from your mediumship. Your mediumship cannot function outside of you. It has to function through you. So therefore, if you're doing your mediumship or psychism correctly, it's got to heal you. It's got to make you a better being, if you will. Because how can you touch the spirit world with your heart and soul and not be affected by that? How can you reunite a mother with her child and it not affect you? You know, so if your mediumship is functioning correctly, if it is functioning through your vehicle, your vessel, then you're going to be affected by that. It will ultimately, or should ultimately, make you a better being. I think. That's what I've, I've discovered through my development is, is uh, you know, it's made me a better person. Mm. It made me more empathetic. It allowed me to understand the impact my words can have Absolutely. on other people mm -hmm. and how it can be so healing. So it truly is its own ministry when 
I'm sharing it with yeah. others. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have to always, I mean, some people say, oh, I'm a clairvoyant and, um, but they're not doing any kind of work. So if you have psychic or mediumship abilities, is it any good if you don't share it? Well, it's a choice, isn't it? It's a little bit like saying, again, I'm a piano player, but nobody's ever going to hear me. Mm. It's a choice, and you make that choice, and I'm not one to judge anybody on the choices they make. Um, I do have a problem with people saying they're clairvoyant or clairaudient or clair or clair or clair. I do have a problem with that, but that's just me. But, you know, at the end of the day, what you do with an ability is a choice. And that's just, just up to you. I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame because we have so many people in this world in pain, in grief. And keeping it to ourselves is maybe depriving others. But uh, I'm not going to judge anybody who makes that decision. For whatever reason. It could be that they're fearful. It could be their own religious beliefs. They don't want to go against them. Whatever it is, it's a choice. Mm. Why should people develop their abilities? Because there are people out there who need it. Because the, you as an individual deserve it. You know, I, I've said this to you and I'm going to just repeat it. I was once a very mixed up, angry girl. You know, I, I, I came from a dysfunctional family. I'd had many, many things happen to me on my journey of life. I was angry. I was violent. I was not a good, in a good place. The journey of mediumship ultimately took me on a journey into my own self, ultimately took me to a healing, helped me to change who I was, I think, for the better. So why would we deprive ourselves of that gift? Mm. to be better people to heal the hurt to understand the past to make the future easier how did mediumship help you mediumship helped me tremendously i mean just to remind you i was a catholic um, from a catholic family devout catholic family where i was expected to be a nun and i still giggle at that thought but losing my parents very young losing my own child, losing my brother who was a heroin addict. It helped me to understand that I hadn't lost them. It helped me to understand that all those that I loved and I was angry at them leaving me on my own, I, I know they're here. I know I haven't lost them, only the physical aspect. So it helped me to know that. And it helps me now, knowing that truth, to help others. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, do you really believe that? And I say, no, I don't. And then they look shocked. I say, I know it. I don't believe it. I absolutely know it. I don't need any more evidence because I know my family are with me. That's lovely. It's the greatest gift. It really is. It's the greatest gift. Can you go through your spiritual journey without developing your psychic and mediumship or even looking into psychic and mediumship abilities? Yeah, sure you can, because you can make that choice to avoid that. It's a little bit like being on a motorway and you avoid that lane because you don't want to go into that lane and you stay just in the outside lane. Mm -hmm. Of course you can avoid it. It will, um, I think, only an opinion. I think it will lessen your journey. But you know, there's many people on spiritual pathways who never look at mediumship, who never look at psychism. But they are good people making a difference to this world. So that's great. It enhances or enriches one's spiritual journey, but it's not required to go on your own spiritual journey, correct? It's a choice. We were all given choices in this world. Mm. What do you think about the world of the paranormal? In what way, what do I think of it? Um, all the, the interest in, um, you know, haunted things, haunted places, 
um, oh, I saw this, or I saw that, or someone, you know, something's going on in my house, or I'd like to investigate that place. What are your thoughts on that as a spiritualist? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Be kind. I love Hollywood. I really do. You know, my favorite pastime is horror movies and Hollywood. But anyway, that's another story for another day. There are many, many things that are unexplainable. So we as humans are forever looking for that unexplained, if you will. The fear factor is big. You know, people want that fear because it's an adrenaline rush. So saying to people, this house is haunted or that place is possessed or whatever, gives that side of their psyche uh, um, an outlet. However, I must frequently to go to houses that are haunted, that are possessed, and usually 99.9% .9 of the time, they're haunted and possessed by people's lives. They're in pain, they're in heartache, their marriage is broke up, financial issues, and we underestimate the power that we have within our own energy field that can cause things to happen without it ever being anything to do with the spirit world. The spirit world get blamed for an awful lot of things that are just not true. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's haunted by a ghost. Well, a ghost isn't a spirit. And a ghost is just a memory bank. So why do you want to go and stand in a freezing cold derelict house watching a memory bank, you know, that has no intelligence, no way of answering back? I would much rather sit with a good medium and have that reunion with a spirit. Mm. That intelligence to give me information. You're talking about residual energy, right? Energy that's yeah. stuck in that space. But that's what a ghost is. It's residual energy. It's memory, you know? But, it, you know, people want the paranormal for whatever reason. They want the fear factor. Good if that makes their lives happy. Good. But there is a big difference. That's all. A big difference. I think it's also a way for many people to, to kind of understand or maybe hope that there's more to life than this vibration, this realm that actually we perhaps move on, get, get stuck in locations. I'm just, I'm just kind of curious what, uh, what's driving the phenomenon now. One of the issues we have is the residual teaching from the Catholic faith, if you will. So, for example, my brother was a heroin addict, so he can't go to heaven. Mm. Yeah? So he, he, he's stuck somewhere to do with the Catholic faith. That's their belief. Spiritualists know we don't get stuck. We know that there isn't a God that says you can come and you can't. We leave that the spirit world is here. It's around us. There's no up or down. Mm. It's here. We leave our body, we move into the spirit world, regardless of the life we've lived. So where are we getting stuck? Where can we be trapped? Where can we be um, lost, if you will? It doesn't happen because the spirit world is just an extension of this world. Mm. And until we are brave enough to leave behind the old teachings, and move into a more scientific aspect. Remember, spiritualism is based on science. Mediumship is based on science. It is not based on fairy stories. So we've got to back up. We've got to be very good at saying scientifically, this is how this happened. We have no scientific truth in somebody being trapped between two worlds or possessed or anything like that, you know? It is not Hollywood. Even though it may be very entertaining. Very entertaining. And I'm going to say it again. I love Hollywood. <laughs> I have wonderful horror movies I love to watch. But when the DVD is over, so is Hollywood. It is not part of my reality. Yeah. That is the spiritualism religion 
point of view, correct? But it's also a mediumistic point of view. Remember, mediumship, I'm going to keep saying it, it is a science. Everything we do with mediumship has to be proven. You know, we have to back it up. We can't prove that somebody's stuck between two worlds just because the kettle switches on or the TV switches on or, or whatever else is going on with your electricity, you know? Mm -hmm. all I'm saying. And I know, I do know that's controversial. I know it'll upset a lot of people. But hey, bring me fact. I'm willing to listen. But I want fact. Because I'm not a sheep who's just going to blindly follow. Mm -hmm. I did that as a child. I want now you to say, here is the facts, prove it to me. And that's what we do with, with mediumship. And it's evidential mediumship, which is taught by the spiritualism organization. That's right. We don't say we have your guide here who was a monk. We don't say we have Archangel Raphael here because that cannot be proved. We say, look, this is your loved one or this is somebody you would know and have lived a life with interacted with and this is the evidence of them and don't forget in england if we do not do that we can be prosecuted mm. we're prosecuted at the consumer act if we are mediums if we advertise as mediums we've got to give evidence of mediumship of another world of another person who has once lived this life who they were Everything all their personality, that all the evidence that, that uh, you guys teach. At the, the memories you shared together, how you connect, all of that. Paint them back to life with evidence, right? And mediums do that. They build the bridge so that the reunion can happen. You know, we are the bridge that connects the loved ones still on the earth plane with the loved one in the spirit world. That's all we are. We are nothing more than a bridge. Mm. I agree. I agree. And it's been an amazing journey. And it's, and it's really been part of my spiritual journey, which started back in 1984. <laughs> back in the day, of course, I took, you know, 15, 20 years off to grow up. Um, and it has have rejoined it. And um, so the whole journey, spiritualism, the spiritual journey, and the psychic sciences, it's what you make it. Yeah. But you, again, remember when you started your journey, what was the hook that brought you on that journey? You know, because that hook that got you interested has ultimately led you, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, onto that journey into who is Kevin Reilly. Not Kevin, who your mom and dad said you were, you were. Not Kevin, who your friends and family say you are. But who is Kevin? And to know yourself, to know who you are, is the greatest spiritual gift, I think. It's, it's been an amazing journey. And I've always thought there's more to life than what we see and feel and hear and, and are taught. And that really started my journey when I was in my early, uh, um, back in the 80s. Um, it's just... To know your power, to know that you are more than your physical self, to know that you have eternity to perfect you. That, that's an amazing realization. And it, it really is quite the, the journey and it's a ministry. I've learned this has become a ministry when, when helping others. It really, truly is its own ministry. That's right. Because you, people are not fools either, Kevin. They will recognize you by the energy you're giving out. And if you're not sincere, if you're not making your place in your own heart, people are going to know that, you know? It's got to be that soul connection. It's got to be. It's amazing. Well, I want to thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me talking about spiritualism, our spiritual journey, the psychic sciences, how it all fits together. You know, you can put these bits and these pieces together. You can include it all or you don't have to include any. And 
Uh, stay in your own lane, like you said. Almost. Exactly. And remember, these are my understanding. I'm not the oracle. I'm just a girl who's on a journey to. Well, I admire the work that you do. And I thank you again for spending some time with me. It's always a pleasure seeing you and talking with you. Thank you for allowing me in your home, Kevin, this evening. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye, my darling. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching, and if you want to find us online, check out our websites, and of course, check out Jackie's book, Pathway to Mediumship. For those who want to develop their mediumship course, you can find me on my website, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I'm everywhere. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.